Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Finally tackling the highest peak in San Diego in probably the worst possible conditions. And by that I mean hiking conditions. This was an adventure, a challenge, it was beautiful. And there's a lot to say. So this video is probably gonna be a little bit longer than usual. Stick around, watch some of the trail footage. 90% of this is with the GoPro, just because of how difficult it was to maneuver. The GoPro, the drone, the Sony camera, I, I mainly stuck with the GoPro. I think the right way to go about showing you guys this trail. And uh, we'll come back and talk about the challenge that was Hot Springs Mountain Trail. That hit me right in the backpack.
Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're talking about Hot Springs Mountain Trail. I hope you guys enjoyed that footage. I'm gonna go through the usual trail details, what you need to know, and then I'll talk a little bit more about my personal experience doing this trail. So Hot Springs Mountain Trail is a 9.8 mile heavily trafficked outback trail located in Warner Springs. Technically this is in Los Coyotes Indian Reservation, so it is a bit separate, but it's right off Warner Springs. The trail is primarily used for hiking and is accessible year round. Dogs are able to use this trail. Dogs, yes. Kids, yes. Granted, they can walk on their own. If you're gonna use the backpack, this is, this is a, a tall feat for that. So up to you if you wanna go down that route. The other very important thing to note here is that it is $10 per person, not per car, like in most state parks. It is per person, cash only. Make sure you are well prepared before you show up. Let's talk about how to get here. So the easiest thing to do is to Google map Los Coyotes Reservation Campground. It's right where the entrance is. You'll notice off to the right hand side, a little sort of ranger box, whatever you want to call it. You've seen that in other state parks. You go in there and you pay, you pay the $10. They give you a little slip. You put that in your car and as cops sort of roam, they know, hey, you've already paid. From there, it is 4.6 miles, even though the guy told us six, 4.6 miles to Hot Springs Mountain, which is where the trail really starts. Now again, we went winter time of year, snow is unpredictable, snow the day before, we went the day after. This part was completely covered in snow and the majority of this trail is non-paved, so it gets really rough. And I'll give you guys a good story about this trail after all the details. So again, to get here, have those $10 ready cash, Los Coyotes Reservation Campground, and then a short hike, a uh, short drive up to Hot Springs Mountain. You'll know you're heading the right way because you pass right by Eagle Rock. This is very, very close. If you guys haven't seen Eagle Rock, uh, I have a video on that. Make sure you check it out. Okay, so you finally get to the little campground area. You park your car and you start making your way up the mountain. First two miles of this are completely uphill, nonstop. Very beautiful, uh, but very, very challenging. And you can see here from the elevation map, let me pause there. This is not 9.8 miles. This is 11 miles, especially if you want to check out the watchtower, the old overlook tower. This is, as we clocked it on multiple watches and everything, this was like 10.9 miles. This is right under 11, not the 9.8. 2,400 feet elevation gain was correct. Back to where we were. So the first two miles, all uphill, pretty, pretty heavy on the quads. You can see here from zero to two, you're climbing, um, probably about 1,500 feet or so, if not a bit more. It's, it's pretty rough, the first two miles are pretty rough. It then kind of evens out a bit and you start to go a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit up, a little bit down. It's pretty enjoyable, but it is, as you're going through this, you can tell like, oh man, on the way back, this is gonna suck. And then the last, I would say mile and a half, it's the same thing, it's all uphill. It's where you get close to the switchbacks here. Uh, and it's all uphill. These are pretty long switchbacks, so it's not too windy. And then when you get to the very, very top, you can make a left and head towards the Overlook Tower, which I very much recommend. There was absolutely amazing and gorgeous views from there. You kind of make a little bit of a detour and then head off and you do a little bit of, uh, you know, the trails are marked with just a little tape on the trees, so it's not super visible. And uh, you're kind of going under some trees. I hope you guys saw that in the GoPro. It's not super clear, but it's not, you know, you can figure it out. It's, it's not that bad. At the very top of Hot Springs Mountain, there's a small ladder and some rope. So be mindful that if this is, this is not your thing, <laughs> you're not gonna get to the very, you'll be like right there. I see it. But in order to get up there, you're gonna need a little bit of upper body strength and um, obviously your leg strength to get up here. But there is that part that I want to note very carefully here is you're making your way through some thick bush and stuff here. And then right when you get to the very, very summit, you got to hop on that ladder, grab those ropes and pull yourself up to the very top. That's how you get to the very, very top. If you don't want to do that, I would suggest stopping at the Overlook Tower and then heading back. Honestly, you're not that far off. Uh, we even joked when we were at the summit that if you look towards the Overlook Tower, it looks even higher. <laughs> I don't know if that's the actual case, but... <laughs> That would be where I would go and then turn back if I didn't feel comfortable doing the rope. Trail is very, very beautiful. I think obviously the last two miles, like right before this, this long stretch here before you get into the switchbacks, I call the switchbacks, um, here on was, was very, very beautiful just because you're so high up. And there are, you know, from what I've read on some of these blogs, 
uh, they're correct. You can see the Pacific Ocean on a clear day. We absolutely saw it. We saw, um, I can spot Cabrillo from many different places in San Diego, definitely visible from up here. You can spot Palomar, you can spot Queen Maca Peak very carefully in the distance. Big Bear, all these places on a clear day, man, they are all around you. It is absolutely beautiful at the very top. So this hike, definitely a must do. Tallest peak in San Diego, guys. Tallest peak in San Diego. Now, I wanna make a comment about that because Cuyamaca Peak, according to everything I've read, is only about 20 feet lower, but a significantly easier hike than this. Granted, we did this in knee-high snow. You're essentially doing knee-ups the entire time. And we weren't turning around. We were there with them on a mission and it, we, it was gonna happen. I do have a video on Cleamac Peak via the Fire Lookout Road. If you're interested in that, make sure you check that out. All right, so I've gone through the basics, how to get there and the trail details. Now let's talk about our experience on this trail. We showed up pretty early, I think around nine. And we read that this was, you know, a five to six hour hike. I think without snow, that's definitely true. With snow, we had no idea the amount of snow that had fallen the night before. Uh, so this was pretty crazy. It took us probably about seven and a half hours to finish everything. And uh, a little bit quicker on the way down because you do get those long stretches of downhill where you can go a little bit faster. Uh, but make sure you go with enough time to really enjoy spending some time up at the very top in both, both at the summit and at the Overlook Tower. Getting there on the road. So we checked in with the Ranger. Ranger charges the $10 and said, hey, you cannot go forward without an all wheel drive or chains. So I have a Subaru Outback, all-wheel drive, a top in and go. So all good, we pay the $10 per person, we go very close to where you would park the car. Honda Civic is stuck right in the middle of the road, just completely stuck. We get out, hey, let us help you out, we try to push. They had just finished putting chains on their car. Uh, chains were not doing anything, or the cables, not chains, the cables. No luck. So then I said, you know what, You know, we're, we're gonna keep helping you out, but let's see if we can kind of get around. They were gonna head back anyway, whatever it was. I went around the guy and then I get stuck. I get stuck. So then we're like, oh F. So then they help push my car. So everyone's pushing my car. And in a matter of minutes, boom, I get unstuck. Woo! Okay, so now I am unstuck. They're still stuck in a pretty deep hole because they keep using the tires and just digging further down. Then a Tesla shows up behind the Civic. So I run over to the Tesla, I say, hey, these guys are stuck. We want to try and get them out. I would back up if I were you guys. Okay, sounds great. They start to back up. They get stuck, okay? Now the Tesla's stuck. However, these guys were smart and they brought, uh, they mentioned they bought on, on Amazon. They look like sleds for your tire. They kind of dug a little bit and they got themselves unstuck pretty quickly. They came over to the Honda Civic. Again, put these things under the tire. One, two, three, push, push. Got the Honda Civic out. Bye bye those guys, they went somewhere else. Uh, they did text us, because we're nice people, we wanted to check in with them. They did text us, make sure you know, everything was good, which it was. Um, I think they headed to Eagle Rock instead, which was probably a smart decision. And the Tesla guys decided to park about halfway through this. Again, dirt road, not taken care of, during muddy snow, all stuff, it's, it's pretty rough. They decided to just park there and hike their way up to where the, the trail starts, essentially. Uh, so that made it a little bit longer for them. And then they made their way up. That was the experience just getting to the trailhead. So long story short, I, I would advise you to do this hike uh, when it's not completely covered in snow. I think if it's, there's snow off to the sides and stuff and there's a little bit on the trail, this hike would be, it's doable, it's a challenge, but it's doable. It was a little insane to do it with this much snow. Um, and I couldn't really, <laughs> I can't explain the struggle I had the next day to, to walk around. So I've made this video long enough, um, covered all everything you guys need to know about coming here, and then I talked a little bit about my personal experience, which I hope you guys enjoyed if you stuck around for this long. Really glad to finally check this off my list. Stick around, 2021.